Hello God's people. Hello family. I'm happy to be speaking with you. Yeah, I call you family because anyone who is doing the will of my father is family. That's what Jesus said. So I'm happy to be speaking with you and I'm happy to be bringing the word of the Lord to you. So um, I'll, I'll just like to say a word of prayer if that's fine. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these ones you love. Thank you for your word that is life. Thank you for your word that gives us understanding. Thank you for your word that transforms us into who you are. We bless your holy name. I ask that you will speak through me, your heart, what you once said in the name of Jesus. And that everyone listening will be greatly blessed by your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so I am glad, like I said earlier, to be bringing the word of the Lord to you from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, all the way. We thank God for, we thank God for the Holy Spirit and we thank God for internet. I mean, we can communicate even though I'm here and I'm glad to be doing that. And I'm going to be speaking in line to your theme which is open faces which is taken from the book of second corinthians 3 18. i will be speaking in that line and what i'll be talking about this time is the importance of beholding i think i should read that scripture we should read it together all right i pray that as you listen you would actually get something that will help you you know um, transform you and make you see differently how Christ wants us to see. So I think we should just read that scripture together. That's your theme, you know, for for this conference. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, it says, And we all, with unveiled faces, continually, I'm reading the Amplified Version, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. i read that again. And we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That's the theme. And I think this scripture is very, very, very clear. You know, so, and your theme is very clear to open faces. And I believe that this scripture is very explanatory, self-explanatory actually. But I'll just talk a bit more on it and I'll take what I said about the importance of beholding. That scripture is simply telling us how important it is to see, how important it is to behold. I said that for us in our kingdom as Christians, it is important that we behold. We have nothing to represent if we are not beholding the one we want to represent. We have nothing to say, we have nothing to give, we have nothing to offer if we're not beholding and seeing the one we want to talk about, the one we want to represent, the one we want to speak on behalf of. So it's important, I wrote here, that beholding in our kingdom is a must, it's not a choice. Beholding in our kingdom is a must. It is not a choice. And when I'm talking about beholding, I'm talking about beholding Christ, the written word. It is not a choice. It is a must for us. Because until we see, we cannot become. Until we see, we can't represent accurately. In the world, they don't necessarily have to see anything. 
anyone can come up and say anything. People actually coin things and just bring up, you know, things and said I brought this up and they just come up with different things that trend. So they don't necessarily have to be old. I can come up with any idea of anything and tell you this is my idea of it and I can do it the way I want and you'll be impressed. I can come up with a topic and say I want to talk about it and I'll fashion it in my own way, my style, my method and you'll be impressed and get something out of whatever I have to present. But in our kingdom, when it comes to God, when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to representing Jesus, we can't do it our way. We have to do it his way. And that is why it is important we behold. There is nothing to show if we are not beholding. And everything we need to see, everything we need to know is written in his word. Everything we look for, everything we want, everything we want to say is written in his word. Every information we want to communicate about him is written in his word. So if you're a pastor, a worship leader, um, an evangelist, a prophet, in whatever capacity you, um, you are functioning, you need to behold. We need to behold. We can't be talking about ourselves. It has to be him. And to talk about him, we have to see what he's about. Know what he's about from his word. It has to be very clear. The importance of beholding. The one we want to talk about, we have to see him. We have to know him. We have to understand him. And you know this thing about knowing God has become, some people get so confused and they go like, I don't even know, how do you know God? How do you see God? How do you hear God? How do you get from God? How do you, you know, it almost looked like, how do you do it? But it's so simple. It is by the word. The more time you spend in the word of God, the more of God you will know. The more time you spend feasting on the word, the more of God you will know. The Bible is the written word of God. It is the word made flesh or written word. So the Bible is what you need to know to know more about God. You can learn from people's experiences and um, you know, the orders they've gone through and the things, the challenges they've come, they've come across and have conquered. Yeah, you can learn so long as it's hinged on the word of God. In our kingdom, we transform and become like one. And that one is Jesus. And everything we need to know about Jesus is here. We live in a generation and in a time where we all want to be ambassadors. We all want to represent Jesus. That's what we say. We want to be ambassadors for Jesus. We want to talk about him. We want the world to see him. We want to make him proud. We want him to be glorified. You know, that's what we say. Yet, majority of us know nothing about him through his word. We know nothing about him. We just like the praise and the fame that comes with it. We don't want to know him and truly, truly carry him. 
And half of the time you realize that we are not really making Jesus proud, we are actually making ourselves proud. We are making ourselves known. We are making ourselves heard. So if truly it is Jesus we want to represent, if truly it is Jesus we want to talk about, if truly we want to be ambassadors of Jesus, then we have to know Jesus. We have to enjoy the process of knowing him. Knowing Jesus is a process. It's not a one-off. It's not something that happens just like that. Is a continuous process of reading about him in his word. That's how you know him. It's not just about what I read yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, or what I heard them say. Our knowing of Jesus is a continuous thing. It's not a one-off. So that's why you can't read your Bible last week and expect to still know what he's saying this week. It has to be a daily communion with him, daily communication with him. And how do you approach the word of God? It's written in that scripture, it says, we all with unveiled face. The way to approach the word of God is to come without pretense. It's to come without deceit. The way to approach the word of God, we need to come with the right heart, the right intention. We need to come truthfully to the word. We can't come with pretense. That's how you come with open faces, no pretense. You come bare, you come open, ready to receive whatever he wants to say. You come interested in what he has to say, not what you want to hear. We don't come to the scripture. We don't come to the word with pre-ideas. You want to find out something in scripture about, for instance, worship, but you come with pre-knowledge and ideas of what you think it is. We don't do that. If you're going to get truth from the word of God, you have to approach the word of God with truth as well. If you're going to get life from the word of God, you have to come with truth. Meaning you understand where you are. You understand your need for the word you are about to read. You're not coming to use the word to minister to the people. You're not coming to read the word to have things to say when you talk to people. You're not coming to read the word so that your ministration will be powerful. You're reading the word because you need first to be transformed. You need first to be healed. You be infirmed first before trying to inform others about the word. That's how you come to scripture. That's how we come to the word of the Lord. No pretense. We come true, we come bare. Not for the purpose of using or abusing the word for a selfish gain? 
We need to approach the word with truth so that we can truly just know him. And love him. According to his word. If we must come to Jesus, we have to come his way, not our way. And so also, if we must represent Jesus, we have to represent Jesus his way, not our way. I can't have anything else I want to sell to the people. I can't have a different version of Jesus I want to sell. You can't. You can't have a different version of Jesus you want to sell that is different from the version that scripture has given. It has to be from what he says. An ambassador speaks for a country in literal terms. An ambassador speaks for a country, is representing a country in whatever country they place them. So if I'm a Nigerian and I'm an ambassador in, um, of Nigeria in China, for instance, I am there to represent Nigeria. I'm not there to do me. I'm not there to put forth my ideas. I am simply there to bring about what is in Nigeria and what Nigeria represents in that location. And so that those outside of the country who are Nigerians can have a, a what's the word to use, can have a base for information and also those who don't know about Nigeria can also have a base to ask about Nigeria. So if we're ambassadors of Christ, we don't have anything to say except what Christ is saying. If we're an ambassador of the kingdom of God, we have no business doing anything outside the kingdom. Everything we do is based and derived from the kingdom. If the gospel we are preaching is the gospel of truth from the word, then everything we say has to come from the word. I'd like us to understand the importance of beholding I'd like it to be very very clear to us the importance of beholding whatever we behold we become It sounds simple, but it is true. Whatever we behold, whatever we spend time with, whatever we ingest, whatever we consume is what we become. We literally become what we behold. And this song is, is coming to my heart. It says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are transformed, but we all, with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror 
the glory of the Lord. We are transformed, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are transformed, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are transformed Cause your glory is changing us From who we are To who you are Your glory transforming us from who we are to who you are and so we are changing we are changing we are changing to who you We are changing, we are transforming, we are changing to who you are. We behold as in a mirror, we are changed, the written word of the Lord, yes. We are change as we be old as in a mirror. We are changed. The written word of the Lord, yes. We are changed. It is as we behold that we are changed. And what we behold, we become. What we behold, we become. I think you need to let that sink in your system. What you behold, you become. Whatever you behold, you become. So you need to start checking the things you are beholding. You need to start checking the things you are feasting on. You need to start checking what you're consuming. It is the word of God that transforms us and it is the word of God in us as ministers of God that transform others it's not our eloquent speech or how we can how well we can sing or how well we can speak it is the word of the Lord in us that transforms those that hear us those that listen to us, it is the word in us. Not our gift. Our gift should actually just project the word. If our gift is not projecting the word, then... So it's not our gift, it's not our talent. It is the word of God that transforms people. It is the word of God that changes people. It is the word of God that in you that changes others. So if you don't have the word of God in you, you need to go back to reading it. The more you read it, the more you see God, you see, you see Christ through the pages of this word, the more you will look like Christ and the more you'll be able to represent Christ accurately. 
I believe it is very extremely important that we represent Christ accurately. I don't think Christ is just looking for people to represent him. You know, just do whatever you like. No, it has to be accurately. And that's where the work is. So I will advise people, it's best that you spend time knowing him before trying to talk about him. It's best that you spend time feasting on him, trying to know what he's about before you start going out to want to talk about him. Do not be in a hurry to talk about God without knowing God. Do not be in a hurry to represent God without knowing him. If you have the call of God upon your life and the fire is burning in you to talk about Jesus, go back in the world. Remember Jesus? When he was anointed, the, 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 the heavens opened and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus didn't go out immediately and started talking. He went back into the wilderness. The spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted, to be tried. So that he can be very, he can be verified if truly he knows who he is. So if you believe the hand of God is upon you, the anointing of the Lord is upon you, you know he has called you into ministry in whatever capacity, then you need to love to go into the wilderness and find out more about the one you want to represent. Find out more about the one you want to talk about. Whenever I want to read the word, I always ask the Holy Spirit to help me because I understand of scripture. The Bible says the letter kills, the spirit gives life. So I always tell the Holy Spirit, help me. Scripture says it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the spirit. So I can't even understand scripture without the spirit of God. So I always say to him, help me. That's how we approach the word. In spirit and in truth. And more than you talking about Jesus and representing Jesus, Jesus wants you first. It's you he's looking for first. Before sending you, he wants you. He wants that relationship. It is the overflow of the relationship that people enjoy. It is the overflow of the relationship with Jesus, the fellowship, the communion with Jesus that the world enjoys. So more than ministry, Jesus wants you first. Jesus wants to transform you first. And so when a believer is not being transformed daily, then the believer becomes a problem to those that hear them. Because like I said, our transformation is not a one-off. Our process of transforming is not a one-off. I can liken it to repentance. Our process of repenting from our ways, from the things we do to the things Jesus wants is not a one-off. It's something that happens for the rest of our life. We are changing. We are transforming. As we behold Jesus, as we behold him in his word, we are changing. We are transforming. And we're able to change others and transform others. Only a changed life can change another life. I'm sure you've heard this a couple of times. You can't give what you don't have. It is true. Only a changed life can affect other lives.
We have to come to a place where just loving Jesus and fellowshipping with Jesus is what we truly desire. We have to come to that place where knowing Jesus and understanding Jesus is what we desire. Not the fame. Not the accolades. Not the praises of men. Not the money that comes with it. Or the good things that come with it. Or the recognition. It has to be Jesus that we want. He has to be Jesus that we love. I like to read this scripture. You know, a lot of the time we say, <laughs> we say, I want to be like Jesus. I want to look like Jesus. It's Jesus I want to talk like and everything. Even Jesus said of himself in John 12, John 12, Forty-four says, Jesus summed it all up when he cried out, whoever believes in me, believes not just in me, but in the one who sent me. The Jesus we want to be like, while he was here, never did anything of his own accord. Though he had the right to, because he's not a lesser God, he's not a smaller God, he's God. That's why scripture says, though he didn't count it robbery, though he had a core right with God, he never counted it robbery, he submitted himself. So the Jesus we want to be like when he was here, didn't do anything of his own accord. He would always say in scripture. He would always say in scripture, he's still in John 12. You know, from 44 to the end. He says, I'm not making of this, any of this up. I'm reading the message version. I'm not making any of this up on my own. The father who sent me gave me orders, told me what to say and how to say it. And I know exactly what his command produces, real and eternal life. The father who sent me gave me orders, told me what to say, and how to say it. So it's not just enough to know what to say. How do I say it? If I can use myself as an example, anytime I want to minister, you know, I spend time in prayer. I spend time in asking God what he wants me to do. You know, I spend time reading my, the word and I don't read it just when I want to minister. Like I said earlier, I don't want to use God. So I read the word, I love reading the word. The word is life to me. So, but when I want to minister, I start to ask the Lord, what do you want me to say, you know? And I don't stop at what. I start to ask, how do you want me to say? Because this word you've given me to say, there is a way you want it said. This thing the Lord said to me, he said, the, the means is as important to God as the end. You know, we always just believe, no, it's okay. What's most important is we are getting results. What is most, most important is that people are being saved. What is most important is that, you know, people are being blessed. But to God, how people are being blessed is important. 
How they are being saved is important. The how is important to him, not just the result. It has to be his way. It has to be his way or no other way. So even when I know what I want to say, I start to ask him, how do you want me to say this? What comes first? What do you want? Because I am so open to him changing what he has said because he can. I would say to him two days ago while I was praying regarding this meeting, while I was praying regarding this, you know, ministration, you said this to me and that's it. So today he's saying something else you're not willing to change it because he told you two days ago. So even for me, what I heard two days ago can be changed on the day because I'm submitted. No matter the numbers of songs or words I have in my head, I am submitted. Sometimes it can even look almost, sometimes like you look foolish, like you don't know what to say. You know, you come in front of people and you're just there and thinking, okay, okay, what should I say? You're not saying that because you lack words. You're not saying that because you didn't study. You're not saying that because you didn't go to school. You're saying that because you know that all of your words put together will be nothing if it's not the words Christ is trying to communicate. Whatever it is I want to say, if it's not what Christ is trying to communicate, it will be nothing. And so it is important that I ask him, how do you want me to say it? What do you want me to say and how do you want me to say it? When do you want me to say it? Should I say it now? Or should I not say it at all? And you see, this process can only happen when we are truly looking out for what Jesus wants. If we want to do us, we don't, we don't ask those questions. If we want to do us, we don't ask, we just do us. If we want to have our way, we don't ask questions like that. We just do our thing. But if we want to do it his way, then we must always be people that inquire. We must always be people that ask. We must always be people that is constantly in communication, checking with him. What are you saying now, Lord? Is it still the same thing as yesterday? Are you saying anything new? Is this something I should be aware of? 